Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Crusader Kings 2 Cagliari. Now this is going to be the last episode of the series and the reason for it is entirely because I made a large mistake last episode. Now, you may be aware of the mechanic of vassal limits which I don't totally understand. I thought it was purely a monetary thing. Like, you go over your vassal limit, then it'll cost you more money, and then you have to get below your vassal limit, and that, that was the kind of cap thing for it. Apparently, that's not the case. Apparently, if you go way too far over your vassal limit, say, because your ruler starts to deteriorate, become insane, that sort of thing, uh, you will lose all your vassals, or lose a fair chunk of them. So what did we lose? We lost Portugal, we lost Andalusia, we lost Galicia, we lost Air, we lost Uliad, we lost stuff we took last week, we lost so much. We, yes. Uh, I think we also lost something over here. Maybe. No, we didn't lose anything over here. But you get the idea. We lost a lot of stuff. And that's really going to throw back the amount of time it would take for us to conquer. Because if we were to go to Andalusia and say, Okay, we want our land back. He won't be a vassal because he's a king. He has 13k force limit. We have 8,000 retinue. Which means we would have to raise troops to actually go and fight him. Which means our vassals would dislike us. So we can't do that too for everyone. And... We can't declare war for the whole kingdom. We couldn't like just say, I want it back, because we don't have that claim. We do have a de jure claim on every single province, but we can't declare them, you know, individually. Like, we can't say, I want... I say, we can declare them individually, we can't declare them as a group. So, for instance, I can't just say, I would like to get all my land back. I would like to declare for all my de jure claims. Because you can't do that. Which means we'd have a 10 year timer on every single war. Which means, given that this guy is 14 years old, it would probably take an awful, like, let's say, see how many provinces he has. Wait, can we just do that from a province? From here somewhere? Uh, no, it's not going to show any her in his realm. Kingdom of Andalusia, does this work? No. Okay. Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Say about 20 years, assuming one of them. It's, no, it's 21 wars. Which is 210 years. Say rulers live for 50 years. We'll call it 5 rulers. So we can take. Like, that would be 10 truce timers away. No, it would be 5 truce timers away. So, 160 in-game years to take all of this back. Now, we've only been playing the game for, for 300 years. This is about 50 episodes worth of work that I would put into it. And to be honest, if I was to start a new series, which I'm going to do when the new patch comes out, we'd be able to conquer the entire world, like nearly the entire world, in 50 years. So, I don't really feel inclined to go and uh, do that. Now, this is entirely because I didn't understand vassal limits, and when vassal limits were introduced, we were in the middle of the campaign. So I didn't set up the I didn't set up the empire in the way I would have if we were thinking about vassal limits. Because here's the direct vassals map. And as you can see, we've got all of these kingdoms. They're not actually that large, all things told. Aquitaine and Italy, they're quite big, but really, they're not that large. For instance, over here, you got Germany. Wait, do we have Bavaria here? Right, we got Germany, Bohemia, and Middle France here, right next to each other. There's absolutely no reason why that this all of this couldn't be Germany. But, it isn't Germany, because the way I was setting it up was I was going, 
okay, we'll get a kingdom, we'll put everybody under the king, we'll get this de jure correct. But it's really hard to do that and stay under the vassal limit. So, what should we do? Well, we probably, once we got over here, should have just started feeding things to Aquitaine, like just directly giving land to the main person in Aquitaine. It would have still worked out the same way, our giant retinues would have stopped anyone from declaring war on us, everyone loved us, it would have worked fine. But getting everything does your right caused us and it caused us issues. So yeah, that's basically the reasoning behind the series ending is we're basically gonna be doing the same we do the same thing we've already done, except it's gonna take ten times as long. Because we can't holy war it. And yeah, that's about it. Also, another annoying thing is this crusade that we put so much focus into, we actually have no progress in. Because we left the crusade, apparently. Because we're not actually the person who was in it. Because crusades are the leader is the person in the crusade, as far as I can tell. Anyway, what's going to be happening next? Well, there is apparently a new Crusader Kings 2 patch coming at some point. There, I have heard rumours it's going to expand the map again. Might be true, might not be. But it's going to be a bigger one. Like um, They usually do a small one focused on kind of role-playing stuff and then one that's focused on like war and extra land like Charlemagne with the timeline back was kind of a war focused thing. Had a bit of role play in it, but then they had Way of Life, which was a bit smaller, a bit more focused on something else. So it'd be nice to see um, like something else, something new, something different. And I feel like if I was to just start another series, say next week, it would just be the same. Like just more of the same of what we've already done. Which is pretty much why Way of, Way of Life series ended. Anyway. We'll be starting a new series when the patch comes out. Hope to see you then. Goodbye.